Hello everyone and welcome to our 0.1 pre-algebra review on order of operations and coordinate planes. And so today um, we're going to get started with uh, answering the question as a class, how many different answers can you come up with for this problem? And then how do we know which one is correct? So we talked about how in class we have subtraction, we have multiplication, and then we also have addition. And we talked about how it's important which order you do that in, because if not, then you're gonna get different answers. And so that's why the order of operations exist. We um, refreshed ourselves on the fact that we, you know, we have P and um, PEMDAS stands for parentheses, and then we have um, exponents, and then we do multiplication and division based on what comes first in the problem from left to right, and then we do addition and subtraction the same way, whatever comes up first in the problem from left to right. And so we talked about what would just be the first step without having to solve the whole thing what would be the first step in these problems so of course we talked about how in this first problem we do parentheses the next problem we have 18 divided by 6 times 5 so what pops up first division pops up first the next problem we have exponents that pop up before division in addition and then the last problem within the set of parentheses we have exponents and so um, we started the class by just arguing two students simplified the same expression differently and we put on our teacher hats and we said who is correct and how do you know and so this this first blue set is very 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 similar um, and this first person did 28 minus 8 and got 20 which mathematically is true but with the order of operations we don't start with 28 minus 8 we know that on this this other person started with 8 times 6 which is 48 and so who was correct on this problem Person B, so we said person A and then person B, and we voted on it as a class. Um, person B is correct. You could verify this with your calculator, but your calculator will do the order of operations for you. All right, the green set is something I see all the time as a math teacher. So if I said who is right, person C or person D, they actually both started in the same spot. So person C started at 6 squared and person D started at 6 squared. But person D said that 6 squared is 36, where person C said that 6 squared is 12. So where's the error? Six squared is not six times two. Six squared is six times six, which actually gives me 36. So person D is correct. Um, person C did some really good math along the way, but they were incorrect in the fact that they um, incorrectly squared six. They tried to do six times two instead of six times six. And so person D was correct. And so we just voted on that in class and kind of got some good conversations going about why the order of operations mattered. And then we did some group work. Um, I assigned a problem to each group and we presented it to the class and so we did the order of operations on these problems. So um, if you're working through this at home, here's what we did. Um, group, the first group presented that we do parentheses first and so nine plus one would give me 10 and we drop the parentheses and then that would be um, 26 minus 10 which then gives me 16. And so my answer is 16 uh, and we talked about how this is like almost like an upside down triangle, the simplified and then it simplified to 16. All right, the next problem, we are going to do parentheses first. And so when I drop those parentheses, I understand that that's gonna be multiplication between the three and the 10. So, and then I do three times 10, which is 30. Nope, sorry, I can go ahead and do those all at one time, but we're gonna do exponents first. So six squared is gonna give me 36. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, well, we'll go ahead and write it three times 10. And then that's gonna be 30 plus 36 um, PEMDAS, and that's gonna be 66. And so 66 is much more simple than our original problem. And we have simplified that. All right, group three had this problem. So parentheses again, six minus two is four. I get to drop those parentheses, but that's an understood multiplication between those two. So four plus 20, I'm gonna do five times four and that simplified to 24. So again, much more simple, upside down triangle. And then we had this next problem doesn't have any parentheses, so I get to skip that step. So we're going to go straight to the exponents. So that's going to be 4 plus 10 times 8 minus 16. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 8 is 80 minus 16. 4 plus 80 is 84 minus 16. And then, of course, we're going to do 84 minus 16. And when we do 84 minus 16, we're going to get 68. And so... The class all attempted all these problems, and then the, um, as a group, we looked at it and we decided if we agreed or disagreed. So I'm going to start with the division, and I'm going to have an ex have an exponent in the division. So that's going to be 100 divided by 10. What is 100 divided by 10? That's going to be 10. That becomes 31. Okay. 
All right, next problem had some parentheses going on and more than one thing in the parentheses. So we're gonna start with negative 64 divided by nine times three is 27. I don't know why I switched colors all of a sudden, guys. That's gonna bother me for my key, I'm sorry. Negative 64 divided by 27 minus 19. And that became negative 64 divided by eight. I get to drop those parentheses. And then I had so many groups that remembered that whenever you have a negative divided by a positive, that is going to be a negative, and that made me so happy today. And it was a good, it was a very good conversation for um, the groups that did not remember it. So then we changed and we switched over to the challenge question. So I had the students try this. So if you're watching this video right now, try the challenge and the super challenge and then see if you get it right. Okay, so on this problem, we have parentheses within parentheses. So this is gonna be five minus three times three squared divided by two. Then we're gonna do exponents. So that's gonna be five minus three times nine divided by two. Three times nine is 27, so that's gonna be five minus 27 divided by two. And then that's gonna be negative 22 divided by two, which is going to be negative 11. So um, we had the class did this, we got into a debate over what the answers were, and it ended up being negative 11. And then we have the super challenge. The super challenge has two sets of parentheses, this second set having one within the other. And so that's gonna be three squared plus one squared plus two, negative one squared. When you type that into your calculator, you have to make sure to put it in parentheses. That's gonna be one whenever you square it. Well, we know that one minus one is gonna give me zero. So on this next step, we went ahead and simplified. That's gonna be nine plus one squared plus two times zero. Nine plus one is 10. So then that's gonna be 10 squared plus two times zero is just going to be zero. 10 squared is 100. So this simplified to 100. That was our super challenge. And so this was just a review of the order of operations on the front. On the back, we did a review of the coordinate plane and we talked about graphing and reading coordinate pairs. So we had our y-axis and we have our x-axis. And we went through and we talked about what are the quadrants. Let's start with the quadrants. This is quadrant one where everything's positive. Quadrant two, the x is positive and the y, I'm sorry, the x is negative and the y is positive. Then we have quadrant three where everything's negative and then we have quadrant four where you have a positive and then a negative. So I had each group say which quadrant the point was in and then I gave its coordinate pair or they gave its coordinate pair. So where was point A? Point A is right here. It is in quadrant one where everything's positive and it lives at the coordinate pair four, four. So right four, up four. So X is left and right. Right is positive, left is negative. Y is up and down. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down from the origin. So what is B at? B is in quadrant two. The coordinates that were given were negative two, three. C is in quadrant three. We are at negative four, negative two for C. Point D, now point D is not in a quadrant. Point D is actually, sorry, that's my, that's my dryer. Um, so this is the Y axis and its coordinate pair is left and right zero and then down three. Point E was on the x-axis. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's a very, it's a very obnoxious dryer. Like it keeps going for a while. Do, 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 do. Okay, now it should be done. Okay, sorry about that. If you could hear the, <laughs> the dryer in the background, I apologize. All right, so that was the x-axis and it was right four and then up and down zero. And then we just went through and made sure that we could check in with our neighbors and draw these shapes where they went. So five, negative five, we drew a circle that was in quadrants, let's do that. That was in quadrant one, I'm sorry, quadrant uh, four. That was quadrant four. Um, a square at negative three, one. So did a square right here. That was in quadrant two. And then draw a star at five, four. Uh, five, four would be right here next to A. And that would be, that was a, st a star that was in quadrant one. So we went from quadrant four to two to one. All right, and then we answered some questions in the coordinate plane. It says point, use the coordinate grid below to answer the questions. Point A is at one, zero, that's here. Point B is at negative five, zero. It says make a line segment between the two and what is the length of that line segment? So what is the length of this line segment? One, two, three, four, five, six. And so the length of AB, that segment, AB is going to be equal to a number that number is going to be equal to a length of six. So from negative five to positive one, that was a length of six. We could just count that. All right, now let's switch colors. It says point X is at negative two, four. So there's X. Y is at negative two, 10. 
what is going to be the midpoint of that segment. So what's the midpoint of that segment? It's gonna be the very middle. So what are those coordinates? Those coordinates for its midpoint are going to be at negative, uh, sorry, negative two and then up seven. So we know the midpoint is the middle of that segment and so those are its coordinates. And we will do a lesson um, next week on actually finding the coordinates of a midpoint if you don't have a horizontal or a vertical line segment. All right, this last one says MN has the endpoints at negative eight, negative two. So there's M and negative eight, six. So up one, two, three, four, five, six. There's N. And it says, is that going to be congruent to the other segment which is given, which is OP? So let's graph that out. So OP. OP would be at six, two. So there's O. Negative nine, two is at P. And so it says, are those congruent segments? Well, remember that we say that congruent segments are equal in length. And so I could go ahead and count this if I wanted to, but I can tell that that green segment is longer than that yellow segment. So those are not going to be congruent. They're not the same length. Let's count it and just make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this one is going to be 15 units long. I think of it like a flag which makes sense because we're going from negative nine to six, so that's gonna be 15 units long. And the yellow one's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight units long, which makes sense because you're going from negative two in the y-axis up to six. Um, because eight is not equal to 15, I know that those are not congruent segments. They would have to be um, equal in length to be congruent segments. And so that was our very first um, lesson on the algebra review, and then we had our homework that was just reviewing those things. So I hope you're having a fabulous day.